Okay, hello, buenas tardes everybody. I hope all of you had a, a great spring vacation. Uh, yeah, it's been a while since I made a video for you guys, so uh, I guess you almost forgot what El Profesor actually looks like. Uh, but I'm still here, I'm still still with you, and as we get uh, set into our final five, six weeks, yeah, six weeks counting the finals week, uh, I'll be with you with a few more videos uh, until, the, uh, the, until the end of the semester, right around uh, the Memorial Day weekend. And uh, before I get going in, in today's video, of course, obviously you can, you can kind of tell I'm in full playoff mode right now. The, uh, uh, the, um, definitely pulling for the Ducks and the Red Wings, so uh, it'd be nice if uh, both of them made it to the uh, made it to the Stanley Cup final. Uh, couldn't ha couldn't happen in the past because the Red Wings were in the Western Division, uh, but finally they got pushed back into the East along with uh, with Columbus, and both Col the uh, Red Wings and Blue Jackets made it into the uh, into the playoffs. So, uh, uh, so uh, like I said, I'm just. Really happy that both teams are in the playoffs, uh, and uh, like I said, it'd be great to see a Red Wings a Ducks a final. Could happen. Red Wings have been playing much much better the last uh, couple months of, of, of the season, despite all their uh, all their injuries, lineup changes, and uh, all of that stuff. All right. Well, listen. Uh, what I want to do for you guys uh, right now is I'm going to start the first of several videos talking about the big three discussion topics. Uh, I've made reference to them off and on over the over the course of the semester. Of course, uh, uh, what you've been working on so far in the class has been the town hall, and we're just about two more, two or three more left, left to go, and we're, we're and we're all done on, all done with that. Uh, and then our final three weeks will focus in on what I call the big three. And these are uh, what I these are what I consider to be three uh, uh, key contemporary topics which are really important to uh, to the United States in a variety of, for a variety of different reasons. Immigration, uh, the U.S. auto industry, of course, GMs and news for not all the right reasons. I'll touch upon that in my next of, in one of the next videos, and also popular culture with 1980s music videos. But in this video, I want to focus in on the uh, on your first big three topic, and that, of course, is the issue of immigration. I'm going to do this over the course of two videos. So in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the nuts and bolts of the uh, of the discussion topic itself, and then focus in on one of the films that you can watch. And then in my second video on immigration. I'll focus in, focus in exclusively on the film El Norte, but let me quickly uh, tell you a little bit more about the uh, nuts and bolts, the parameters in terms of framing your discussion, and then I'll talk a little bit about your first choice for the film, that is the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the goofy comedy, A Day Without a Mexican. Uh, all right, um, again, uh, your, your comments on immigration are due in the discussion board, so go to the same area you've been going to all semester long for town hall, uh, but instead of uh, going into the town hall threads, go to the uh, topic, go to the folder I have for Im Im immigration. And uh, what you're to do is so as you get ready to start posting your, your comments, there's two things that I want you that I want you to be to be looking at. And uh, uh, and what you have to do, this is all this is all due on Friday, May the 9th. So we got about three weeks to work with uh, once we come back from the spring vacation. And uh, the first thing I want you to do in your comments is talk a little bit about a contemporary issue and uh, from from a newspaper article. So whether it's the Washington Post, the Christian Science Monitor, the New York Times, and since I get the Los Angeles Times uh, home delivery, a lot of great articles in immigration, whether it's opinion pieces, whether it's in the whether it's in the local, whether it's issues pertaining to Los Angeles, San Bernardino, Riverside, uh, and of course uh, issues pertaining to San Diego, uh, and of course international uh, national issues with respect to the whole immigration reform uh, uh, topic, how it's stalled in Congress. Some Republicans want it. Others are gung-ho against it, so it's really causing a major headache for Speaker of the House John Boehner and the rest of the Republican leadership in that you've got literally a 50-50 split in which some Republicans want it, others don't, and uh, undoubtedly, I'm sure some of you will, will pick up on that in your, uh, in your discussion. So find a contemporary article, and of course all these newspapers have great websites, especially the LA Times, New York Times, Washington Post, Christian Science Monitor, and even uh, the British uh, uh, famed uh, weekly uh, The Economist, some great stories on not just U.S. issues, but also international, so issues pertaining to uh, France, uh, Great Britain, uh, Turkey, Italy, uh, Spain. So if you want to focus in on, on an international topic, by all means, you can go and do that too. You don't have to limit your uh, focus to United States uh, uh, if you want to go, go uh, uh, off the reservation, so to speak, uh, you can go ahead and, and go ahead and do that. So 
when you choose your article, you find your article, uh, give me a comment that, that is, uh, give me your, your, your feelings, your thoughts, uh, your thoughts about, about the topic. Uh, what did you take away from it? Uh, how, is this, uh, how is this important? Especially if you choose something that has a local angle, whether it's a topic pertaining to events happening in San Diego, uh, Chula Vista, National City, El Cajon, Escondido, or anywhere else in the Southland, like Los Angeles, Riverside, uh, Temecula, <clears throat> By my area, of course, uh, uh, Orange County into Ventura, even the rest of California, too. Uh, immigration is definitely a key, key issue there. So uh, tell me a little bit about your, your thoughts, your, your perspective of, 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 of it. And, uh, uh, and then within the context of your article, post a link to the article. So whether you embed that within your, the, uh, within your discussion itself or, or, you, or you post a link separately, uh, somewhere in your discussion, include a link to your article so I can check it out and, uh, and, and glance at it as I'm looking at, uh, looking at, 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 at your comments. Um, and again, uh, 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 obviously, like with Town Hall, but in this case, in, in more, uh, in more uh, uh, concrete terms, I definitely want more discussion in terms of everybody replying to everybody else within the uh, uh, within within the, the big three. In Town Hall, I kind of let it go, so I'm not really so. If if you, if you didn't really reply too much to others or to me during the course of Town Hall, that's not going to be a big problem. That that's that's not a big issue. But for the big three, definitely, I want to see more of an of an effort. I want to see. A more cross discussion in which you guys that talk to each other reply to uh, uh, reply to others in the class and reply to me as as well. So unlike town hall, I will definitely make a more concerted effort to uh, to also be part of the discussion. Rep I'll reply to everybody as uh, your comments start to uh, start to uh, filter in. Okay, and then the second part of, of, of your talk, of your discussion, so ideally if you have two large paragraphs in the course of discussion, that's a good way to go. So one big paragraph, talk about your article, and then the second big paragraph, talk about the movie. And what you're to do in part two is choose one of two movies which have a theme on Latin American immigration. Uh, the second film, I'll talk more about this in the next video, is the classic film El Norte, which came out in 1983. So it's a 30-year-old film, but it still has a lot of resonance. In fact, uh, I think it was the late, great Roger Ebert, the film critic, uh, he said it was like the grapes of wrath of, 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 of modern times. And uh, I'll talk a little bit more about Ebert's perspective when I make the El Norte video coming up uh, <clears throat> I try to have everybody toward the end of the week when we come back from spring or the, or the week after that. So it'll be within the next uh, within the next week once you see this video that my El Norte video will, will be out. But the uh, but the one film that you can check out and it's really really easy to see because I actually have it embedded within the class itself is the goofy comedy A Day Without a Mexican. This film came out in two thousand four. Uh, uh, director Alfonso Arau directed it. You might remember uh, Alfonso Arau. He was actually the uh, uh, in the goofy comedy with Chevy Chase. Uh, uh, and uh, Steve Martin, Martin Short, uh, the Three Amigos film in 1986. Uh, Arau played El Wapo, the, uh, the the goofy leader of uh, the goofy leader of the uh, of, of the bandidos. Uh, but Arau was 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 also a director. Did, directed many films, and uh, this is the one that he actually that he actually actually uh, was was in, in, involved in. Um, and even though the premise is kind of is kind of silly, and the characters are a little bit more, uh, there's I guess a lot more goofy stereotypes. That that is, there's the anti-immigrant guy who's really gung ho, looks like someone you see who appears with a uh, uh, Glenn Beck, a uh, Sean Hannity, Bill O'Reilly, uh, and of course there's the more liberal people. Uh, and then there, there, there are the goofy professors. There's there's a uh, uh, there's a uh, uh, there's a your stereotypical Asian scientist. There's the the Islam, the, the Muslim scholar, uh, and of course, and also the, the news people. So news people, you might you might say, uh, definitely something comparable to what you see from the Anchorman films. That that is uh, uh, that is the the the, 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 the wild and crazy uh, Latino we we weatherman, comparable to the guy here in Los Angeles, Danny Romero on KBC Eyewitness News. Uh, uh, this, this the weatherman in the film uh, kind of reminds me of, of Daniel Romero, uh, that is the wild and crazy hyperactive uh, uh, we 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 weatherman. But even the, uh, once you get past all the hyperbole and the silliness of it, I think there's an important message from, from the film. And the film uh, and the film looks at looks at at the message of uh, what would happen to the state's economy, California's. That is, if all the Mexican and Latino uh, and Latino uh, pe people, whether they were whether they were legal citizens or undocumented citizens, what if they were all to just vanish into thin air? What would happen to the state state economy? So, the film takes a perspective that these are people who, are, of course, central, they're important to the state's e economy. Uh, some of the characters uh, obviously get that, and others definitely don't. So. 
even though there's a lot of silliness and goofiness, he might, uh, I would probably argue that maybe uh, some of the uh, sci fi films from the 1950s uh, have better plots and storylines than, than this film. Uh, but despite all of that, I think it does a pretty good job of at least telling you about, about how important Mexicanos uh, and Latinos in general are central to the state's economy. So, so look past all, 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 all of that. Try to get to the essence of what the film is is is, uh, is presenting, and then give me your thoughts about the film. What did you like about it? What did you think was the most important lessons about it? Whether it was about economy, uh, politics, family issues, social relations, things of, of that of that nature. Um, so if you like the film, great. Let me know. I'll mention that in your, in your comments. But if you hated the film, let me know also. Uh, tell me what you hated about it. And if you feel that there is a film that maybe could have done a better job about talking about these issues, let me know. Uh, I'm really, I, I really want to uh, want to get some uh, more feedback in terms of what films might, might work better. Interestingly, uh, I've been showing this film for the California class, the 124 class, the last couple of years. And it seems like it's hit or, hit or miss. Uh, what one semester it was overwhelmingly hated. Everybody in the class seemed to hate it. Then the semester after that, or the year after that, it was more more positive. So uh, I guess depending on, on on the mood of the class, uh, whether they're in the mood for 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 silly comedies, they like it. Or if they're in the mood for more serious, hard hitting, uh, tough uh, uh, political uh, politi political uh, commentary and social commentary. Then, then, then they don't like the film. So I'm just, I'm really curious to see what you guys think about this. That is, if you decide to watch this, uh, the film itself, as I mentioned, is located within the class itself. So if you go into the external links and video section, I've got a section there in which you can see the five parts of the film. I've got them embedded from my YouTube right into the class. So no need to see all the uh, some of the silly comments, the wacky comments that people post on YouTube videos. So everything is embedded for you right there in the class in the external links and video section. And then for the film summary to know who all the characters are, whether it's uh whether it's the whether it's the, the whether it's the the, the, the singer, uh, his 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 wife, uh, whether it's uh, Leela, the, uh, the the news reporter, or whether it's the uh, whether it's the the the, the, the McClares, the father and son, the son is the anti-immigrant guy, and the father he's the rancher, but he's more uh, uh, he's more uh, agreeable, more uh, um, sympathetic to the plight of the, of his uh, of the Mexicanos, especially because his uh, his longtime ranch hand is is more or less sort of a close friend, a compadre, so to speak. Uh, so obviously generational themes, that's a, that's a, another theme that's uh, mentioned a little bit in, in, in the film. So uh, for a film summary to tell you a little bit about the plot line and who the people are, who the characters are, but go inside the uh, course document section. I've got a film summary which tells you all, all, all of that so this we can follow along and see what's happening as the story unfolds. So again, for the film itself, go into external links and videos section. And then for the uh, uh, storyline, for the plot summary, go into the course document section. Okay, all right, so again, uh, uh, that's just the uh, first installment I want to mention about immigration. Uh, when I come back with you for, with my next video, I'll talk a little, lot more about the El Norte film. El Norte is a much, much better film than uh, A Day Without a Mexican, but unfortunately, it's a little bit harder to, to find. So uh, so in order to watch it, it looks like you, you got to pay for it. I haven't been able to find a... Uh, uh, a free copy of it, A Day Without a Mexican was no, no problem to find because I got it free off of YouTube. But in terms of uh, El Norte, uh, you've, got to, you've got to pay for it. You've got to, uh, you've got to find it on, uh, uh, on iTunes or Hulu Plus. Uh, so, if you're not, so if you don't mind the pain of so like $3.99 to, to rent El Norte, uh, go ahead and do that. But I'll tell you more about El Norte itself, some of the uh, underlying themes and how to, how to actually find the film in my next video. Okay, so... Uh, Again, this first of several videos I'll make for you as we get toward the end of the class. Um, next time I join you, I'll talk more about El Norte, and then in other videos, I'll talk more about the other parts of the big three, talking about the uh, uh, U.S. auto industry and 1980s of music videos, popular culture of the 1980s. So, all right, so it's great to have everybody back. Hope you guys all had a great spring vacation. Uh, we got a lot of stuff to cover in, the, in our final six weeks, and I'll definitely be with you every step of the way until uh, the class finally comes to its conclusion. All right, so you guys take care, and I'll talk to you all again very soon.